So as you know, today is your first non-calculator maths GCSE exam. So here is some last minute revision to go through. Here are the topics we'll be looking at if you want to skip ahead and focus on any of these in particular. These are obviously some of the most common ones to show up in the non-calculator exams. So first of all, we've got fractions, operations, but particularly with mixed numbers. We need to work out two and one seventh, add one and one quarter. So I'm just going to convert them into improper fractions. So two times seven is 14, plus one is 15 at the top, obviously over seven. Plus one times four is four, plus one is five quarters. Now we need a common denominator. The lowest common multiple would be 28. So change the first one by four. So that's 60 over 28. And the second one multiply by seven, 35 over also 28. Add the numerators, 95 over 28. Now this one hasn't specified to leave it as a mixed number or an improper fraction, so you can leave it as that if you want. If you do convert it back, you should get 3 and 11 over 28. Part B is then dividing, so again I need to convert them into improper fractions. So I've got work out 1 and 1 fifth divided by 3 quarters, so the first one is an improper fraction, would be 1 times 5 plus 1 is 6 fifths divided by three quarters. Now we're going to do keep, flip, change. So keep the first one as six fifths, flip the second to four thirds, and then multiply. Multiplying straight across, we get 24 at the top and 15 at the bottom. This one they have specified to give your answer as a mixed number and in its simplest form. I'm going to simplify it first. I can obviously divide both by three, so eight over five. And then how many fives go into eight? One and three fifths. Now we've got decimal division, so I'm going to change them both to whole numbers. When I divide, I try and change them both by the same scale. Luckily, in this case, that works out just fine. So I'm going to multiply both by 100. So I've got 846 in my bus stop divided by 15 on the outside. 15 obviously doesn't go into 8, so I look straight at 84. 15 goes into 75 five times, and then that's the remainder of 9. And then 15 goes into 96. 15 would go into 90 six times, but then I've still got a remainder, so I'm going to have to add some zeros here. So remainder is 6. 15 goes into 60, though, luckily, exactly four times. Now, because I did change both my original decimals by the same amount, I moved the decimal place twice each. My answer for division is just that. So 56.4 is your answer. Now we've got a multiplication version, so work out 0 0.004 times 0 0.32. So as I was saying, I'm going to change them both to whole numbers. In this case, it doesn't matter if they're different scales. So that would be obviously multiplying by 1,000 to make 4, and then the second one by just 100. That's fine to make 32. So then I've got 4 times 32. You can do column multiplication if you like, or you could just literally just times it by 2 and times it by 2 again. That's fine. But some of them are a bit more complicated, so I'll show you column multiplication. So 4 times 2 is obviously 8. 4 times 3 is 12, so technically you're carrying that 1. But that was it. So I've got 128, but I do need to scale back my answer. Now, when you're multiplying, you just work out how many times you move the decimal place for both. So you see how that was three and this is two. So in total, that's five. So 128 currently has its decimal place here. So I'm going to move it by one, two, three, four, five. And then you see how if I fill in the zeros, I've got obviously two zeros here and one at the front. 0 0.00128. When you're multiplying, you do always have to scale it back at the end. So find the lowest common multiple of 108 and 120. I'm going to actually break them down into their product of prime factors. That's how I prefer to do it. So I start with two if they're even numbers and just keep halving it until it's no longer even. So that would be 54, two again, 27. It's not even anymore, so I check either three or five. Three obviously works, nine, three and three. Then 120, two to 60, two again, 30, two again, 15. Now I can look at three and five, which is both. Then I get my Venn diagram, so just scribble out two circles. So we start filling in the middle, anything they have in common, you see how they've got a pair of twos there, and then another pair of twos, then they've got a pair of threes, and then there's nothing else in common. So the rest of it, I fill out three and three on the left, and two and five on the right. Now for the lowest common multiple, you have to multiply together everything in the Venn diagram, all of it. So we've got 9 times 2 is 18, times 2 is 36, times 3 is 108, and then 2 and 5 make 10, so I'll probably just times that by 10, which is 1080. For the highest common factor, same method, but you just multiply together the middle numbers. So first of all, write down the value of 5 to the power of 0. Anything to the power of 0 is always 1. Anything, even if it's a letter, always 1. Write down the value of 5 to the power of minus 2. So negative power means the reciprocal take the reciprocal. So currently 5 would be 5 over 1. So if you flip the fraction upside down, think of keep flip change, that becomes 1 fifth. But then I do need to then square it. 
So obviously 1 squared is 1, 5 squared is 25. So 1 25th. Part B is then 2 to the power of 5 times 2 to the power of 4 over 2 to the power of 3, and they want it in the form of 2 to the power of n. So we're just simplifying this with our index laws. When we're multiplying with the same base number, you add. So that would be 2 to the power of 9 in the numerator, and then still 2 cubed in the denominator. When we're dividing, again, same base number, you subtract. So that would be 2 to the power of 6. A few more index laws. So when you've got the brackets, it means multiply the powers. So that's p to the power of 10. And then this one, we've got a divide one. Now, the 12 and the 6 at the start are not anything to do with index laws. They're not powers. They're just numbers. So those two numbers, you are just going to literally divide. So 12 divided by 6 is just 2. Then looking at the x's, because you've got x to the power of 7 divided by x to the power of 3, that's when we can use our index law, which means subtract the powers. x to the power of 4 is left. Same with y, although be careful because the y at the end is technically to the power of 1, not to the power of 0. So when I subtract it, it would be y squared left. So just do it column by column, piece by piece. Okay, now we've got some negative and fractional indices. So work out the value of 81 to the power of negative a half. So as I said, negative power is the reciprocal. I tend to like to do that first, just so I don't forget. So that would be the reciprocal of 81, which is just 1 over 81. And then to the power of a half. Now, fractional powers. The denominator means some kind of root. In this case, because it's a 2, that's just square root, isn't it? So square root both numbers, obviously, the 1 is just still 1, isn't it? But the square root of 81 is 9. So that's 1 ninth. And then here, part B, find the value of 64 over 125 to the power of 2 thirds. Again, some kind of root. Start with the denominator, which is 3. So I need to cube root, not square root the 64, because I know 64 is also a square number. In this case, they want us to cube root it. You should have these memorized. They won't make you square root or cube root or any type of root, anything that's not already a square or a cube number. Okay, so you should be able to recognize it. 64, the cube root is 4. 125, it's 5. But then the 2 is still there, isn't it? That's a power of 2. I need to now square both numbers. Obviously squaring 4 is 16 and 5 is 25 again. 16 over 25. So the table gives information about the weekly wages of 80 people. First of all, complete the community frequency table with this information. You just need to add them up. So the first row is the same, 5, but then I'm going to add 10, which is 15. Then I'm going to add 20, which is 35. 20 again, 55. 15, 70. And the final 10 makes 80. Your final row should add up to the total that they've told you if they have in the question. That's one mark. Obviously then part two is to draw this information on the graph. Now you just need to remember that you're plotting on the x-axis the right hand side of your ranges. So the first one will be at 250 along and then 5 up. Just double check if the scale is a bit tricky. 300 along, 15 up. 350 along, 35 up. You get the gist. Your cumulative frequency graph, the value should always be increasing. So if it doesn't, something has gone wrong with your table. Now join it up with a nice curve as best you can. Something a bit like that. Obviously do it with a pencil so you can rub out if it doesn't go very well the first time. Now there is a part C. So Juan says 60% of this group of people have a weekly wage of £360 or less. Is Juan correct? We need to show our answer. Obviously go back to your graph and we're going to look at where 360 is. Obviously that's on the x axis, so I'm going to draw a line from 360 up. Just be careful again of the scale, figure out exactly where 360 is. So that should be two squares along. And then when it hits your graph, go across to the y axis. And try and read that off to the best of your ability. So I would say that's probably about almost 39. They will give you a slight range. Now just double check, they have said 360 or less. So yes, that would just be 39 people. But Juan has given us a percentage, so we'd need to convert 39 into a percentage. Now it's not 39%. Because if you remember, it was out of 80 people, wasn't it? So it's actually out of 80. Now, hopefully, on your graph, you might have actually got 40. <laughs> you can see it's very close to 40. So that times 100. I know this is non-calculator. Let's say you got 40. You know that that would be 50%. So 39 is technically less than 50%. So you could probably write down, given that it's non-calculator, you probably put that's about 50%. Because they're saying, is he correct? Well, no, because he said 60% of this group. Whereas we've figured out it's obviously 50% or less, isn't it? 50% is less than 60%. I think that would be enough. If you've got 40 out of 80, then that would be much easier to calculate. You could say it's exactly 50%. So the table shows information about the heights in centimetres of a group of year 11 girls. So you've got the table here. Draw a box plot for this information. So box plots need five pieces of information. The least, the median, the lower quartile. Then you need the upper quartile and the greatest value. Now, do you see how here they actually haven't given you that? So we're going to have to work out those two values ourselves. So the interquartile range is obviously the upper quartile minus the lower quartile. 
So to do the opposite, I could just do the lower quartile plus the interquartile range. So that'd be 168, wouldn't it? And then the same with the greatest, same logic. Obviously, the range is between the least height and the greatest height. So the least is 154 plus 20. The greatest would be 174. So sometimes they give it to you straight. Sometimes you have to work it out. Now I can just draw five vertical lines along all of those points. Again, just double check what scale they've given you. Something a bit like this. Then obviously the three in the middle, you join them up to create a box. And then the other two, the greatest and the least, you just draw a line through the middle. So you should get something a little bit like that. Now there is a part B. So they've now given us that the box plot below shows information about the heights in centimetres of a group of year seven girls. So R1 that we had was year 11, wasn't it? This is now year seven. Compare the distribution of heights of the year seven girls with the distribution of heights of the year 11 girls. Now you always mention two things here. This is two marks. The first thing you're going to mention is something about the median. Now they've only said compare. So literally make a comparison. So have a look at this one. So we can see the median is obviously here, which is by the looks of it, 157.5 centimeters. Now, if we come back and have a look at the year 11s, the median was 165, which is bigger, isn't it? Which is greater. So you're literally going to compare it. So you say, related to the context, the median height of year 11 girls, and you just say if it's bigger, smaller, greater, less than, whatever you want to call it, is greater than the median, and then you say the other one, height of year 7 girls. Now, they don't necessarily ask for actual data unless it says in the question, but if you do put the data, you have to make sure it's correct, because if you get the numbers wrong, they will mark you down. Two is then some kind of spread, so you can either do the interquartile range, which is what I prefer to do, or they will accept the actual range, as in this whole range, but I prefer to do interquartile range. So that is obviously this box here, the width of this box. So the upper quartile is here, which is obviously 165, and then the lower quartile is kind of halfway here, isn't it? What's that? 154.5? So the interquartile range for the year seven girls, you could work that out, is obviously 10.5. And then if we go back and again look at our year 11 girls, you either work it out or if it's in the table, then it's in the table, that is seven. So that's less. So you say the interquartile range of heights of year seven girls is greater than the interquartile range of heights of year 11 girls. Now we've got converting recurring decimals into fractions. So you want to write down that X is equal to the decimal they give you, unless they've obviously already done that. Now we want to isolate the recurring part. So this one, the two is not recurring. So I first need to get 10X, which will, if I multiply both sides of that equation by 10, will move the two out of the decimal part. Then you want to have another version of that equation with the same recurring decimal. So also in the order five, six. So I would have to multiply by 100, which would mean I would have a thousand x on the left and then this one would become 256.56 you see how the recurring decimal is repeating now you can subtract you always subtract them so subtract both equations we obviously have 990 x and then on the other side the whole point is that the recurring decimals will cancel each other out when you subtract so it's 256 minus 2 which is 254 finally you want to solve it so that you can get x again as the subject so divide by 990 now, in this case, they have said, show that it can be written like this. Now, that's obviously clearly just simplifying it by dividing by two. So I would just straight away write. And therefore, that equals what they have. So those are some of the most common topics to come up on the non-calculated paper. Best of luck in your exam if you're doing it today. And come back in a couple of weeks for last minute revision on paper two and paper three.